Good afternoon and welcome to the Extended Disk webinar. Today's 15-minute webinar is on interpreting the Extended Disk Diamond. Um, we are recording this webinar uh, and we'll post it on our website as well as our YouTube channel. Um, we won't have time as always for live questions um, because we want to max out our 15 minutes, but I promise you if you put your questions in the questions section, um, we'll follow with, up with you after the webinar. My name is Christina Bowser and I'm the training director here at Extended Disc and joining me today is my colleague and president of Extended Disc, Marku Kalpinen. Hello, Christina and hello everybody. Hello. Um, this is a such a great topic. Um, you know, all I had to tell Marku was that we're going to do one on the extended disc diamond and both of us get excited about it because it's something we love to talk about. So um, why don't we get started? We're, what You know, just remember, we're going to give you just a 15 minute overview and a lot of these kind of subtopics that we're going to talk about today already we've done in the past and we'll mention it, but you can find all the recordings on our extended disc dot or website under webinars. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, again, like you said, we're going to give you kind of a big picture of what the diamond is all about. And of course, one thing we kind of proud of it because it's our proprietary uh, product and, and part of uh, our intellectual property. But really, I think to simplify the diamond is to think of the diamond like this. It's a map. It's a map to help us to make behavioral modifications. And in our extended disk assessment results, we provide individuals disk style in many different formats. Profiles, of course, is the most specific because it really mm -hmm. identifies very clearly the relationship among all four disk styles. And as we have talked about so many times before, we should always look at the relationship among all four disk styles. We should never look at them independently. But the diamond provides another way of really understanding what are our comfort zones. And if we really want to become more successful, how do we need to modify behavior with different individuals and in different situations and how much effort and energy it's going to take? Right. And, you know, a lot of our clients um, have used other DISC assessments before. And hopefully today's webinar will kind of help clarify, well, what is the difference between the extended DISC diamond and maybe other DISC models? And one of the differences is probably the most obvious. Obviously, the quadrants are well represented. You can see D, I, S, and C. Um, but what is this diamond in the middle of it? Well, really the diamond really, what it does, it shows that we are a combination of all four styles. The power of the four quadrant model that has been around since a long time is that it's simple. But the drawback of being simple, that it's too simple. And the diamond really allows us to understand the complexities of our behavioral style. You can interpret it in different levels, but it very clearly begins to paint the picture of who the person is. You know, whether I'm looking at my own results and creating that confident self image, or maybe I'm a manager and looking at my employees or my team, the diamond really becomes a very practical tool and it's really easy to use tool, especially when we're dealing with the group of individuals. It's one thing to look at results of one employee or one person. When you have a group of, let's say, only 10 employees trying to look at individual reports and try to comprehend what my strengths are, what my challenges are, and more importantly, what do I need to do differently going forward it becomes very complex, but diamond, and I think we'll see that later in this webinar, we will. Will really simplify that process. And when people see it really almost instantly, they understand what's happening with their team. Yeah. And I think, you know, I like where Marku talked about the different levels. Let's just say you're doing, you know, a, a one hour disc introduction. Um, and maybe the level you get to is to help the participants identify, well, what quadrant am I in? I'm in the D quadrant, the I, S, or C. And what does that tell me about myself? And then, you know, maybe you're in a coaching session one-on-one. -on -one. You can go deeper dive and the extended diamond helps you do that. So let's talk about that deeper dive. How do we interpret these different sections of the diamond? Well, in the diamond, each quadrant has 40 different specific disc styles. So totally we have 160 disk profiles, if you will, mapped on this diamond. And each location on the map corresponds to a specific type of profile. And, and when you go to the outer circles, if you will, outer corners, we're really talking about those, what we call a one style or 100% uh, disk style uh, individuals. Like if somebody's in the top right-hand corner, what's highlighted there in that D triangle, if somebody were to fall in that area, 
they would be what we call 100% D-style. Doesn't mean that they have no I, S, and C, but D-style is clearly the most comfortable for them. Right, so as you move into the outer circle of the diamond, you can see that there are these two uh, distal combinations, and there's actually six of them that go around the outer circle. Um, so again, as Marku pointed out, it's a map. So if you're graphed anywhere in those out, that outer ring, you know you are at least have identified two styles that you're comfortable with. And depending on which quadrant you're in, you can further narrow down which is your dominant style. Yeah, the most comfortable style for the person always determines in what quadrant you will be placed. So if I stay in that D quadrant, in that outer circle, we would have a DI profile or a DC profile, depending where you fall and what the relationship between, in this case, the DNI and DC would be. And also, even when we look at the stars below the middle line, the S and C stars in this case, and that will have an impact where they will be placed. Right. But just remember, this is a graph of only showing your, the natural styles, the styles above the line, not that you don't have all four. Um, so then we move on into the inner circle of the diamond, and you can see that there are all these three-letter combinations of distyles. And as Marku mentioned, we describe your distyl in order of its dominance. So whichever quadrant you're in, that will always be the first letter of your profile. And here's the one thing that a lot of people do not know. Actually, having these uh, three distals that are comfortable to you when you fall in this inner circle, those are the most common types of disc profiles that we see. Actually, a lot of disc companies only look at the primary or the secondary, and they overlook this very important group and the largest groups of disc profiles out there in the general population. In fact, the research clearly shows that having three stars above the middle line, it is the most common profile to be seen. Right. And then there are, you know, there's one more group that is unique to extended disc uh, diamond, and those are what we call the opposite styles. So you can see these two pairings of D and S um, and also of I and C. Yeah, these profiles are not as common, obviously. There's nothing wrong with these behavioral styles, but they are not as common. Um, and DS and SD, because in many ways they are opposite behavioral styles. People may be saying, well, how can you have those two? Believe me, they exist there. And I know many people who happen to be in either DS or SD or IC or CR profiles. They are uh, unique. Uh, nothing bad about those profiles, right. but they're just not as common to see. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, you if you want to learn more about these opposites and how we how they show up, or if you want to learn more about people who kind of sit in that inner circle who have three styles they're comfortable with or, or two styles, um, we've done webinars in the past. You can find them on our extended disc website. Let's look at how the diamond can be used at the individual level. All right. So let's look at Sally Smith. Well, uh, Sally Smith, when I look at her style there, the starting point of the arrow is the profile two or the natural style. So now we place the coordinates on the disk map where they are. So the starting point tells me that this person, S style is the most comfortable. And because Sally falls in the inner circle, it would also tell me that she has three stars above the middle line. Only one of the disk stars would be below the line. Right, and then the tip of the arrow is what we call her profile one or her perceived need to adjust. Where does Sally, when she took the assessment, feel she needs to adjust to? And you can see that the tip of the arrow is located in this case, the I quadrant. So again, we don't necessarily know why, but Sally, who is a dominant S, feels a need to um, emphasize her I style at this point in time more. And here you can see how the diamond becomes powerful because the length of the arrow clearly shows how much, in this case, Sally perceives she needs to modify her behavior in her present environment. In her case, the arrow is fairly short, mm -hmm. so she doesn't really feel a lot of pressure to change. Sometimes you can see long arrows, nothing wrong with those situations, but it will tell us that that person perceives I need to modify my behavior quite a bit in order for me to be successful in this environment. Right, so let's just say Sally's boss said, hey, I need you to pick it up. I need you to be, quote unquote, more D-style right now. So it's not about ability, as Marcus said. Sally could rock it, but at the end of the day, after she's been very decisive and moved very quickly and got her task done, she might go home, open the door and say, hey, somebody get me a bottle of wine. I need to go into my office. Nobody talked to me for two hours. And we always good to keep the big picture in mind. Why are we doing this? And why we, the reason we are using extended disc is to help people to modify their behavior. And one way you can use the diamond is to really visually show that there are situations where Sally needs to modify her behavior. If she's in an environment where the S-style behavior is really what's going to create success, 
seller will know up front that that's not going to be that difficult. I don't have to modify my behavior that much. But when do I have to go that C quadrant or especially that D quadrant? That's when the arrow needs to get longer and longer and more energy, more effort and concentration will be required. But of course, we provide the, her the tools how to make those modifications, making it clear, Sally, we are not trying to change who you are, which is helping you to modify your behavior for short periods of time so you can become more successful. Exactly. So Marku had mentioned early on about not only is the diamond effective in describing um, an individual, but it can it has great applications when you're talking and describing a team. Yeah, I'm seeing that when people first see extended disk, the team maps are really where they kind of gravitate toward first, because if they're familiar with the disk and when they see this, they clearly understand, even without having any understanding of the diamond, they clearly understand what the message is. Like here we have a team and, and they, we have different kind of maps. This is what we call an arrow map that will not only show the natural styles, but also the adjusted styles of the team members. So here we have a team that's clearly more concentrated in the I and S quadrants. And as you probably noticed, Christina, we often see that teams do have these kind of concentrations. Right. So in this case, you know, this is, if I were just to kind of make some broad assumptions, this is a more people oriented team. So, it may, you know, perhaps just to give myself more information about this team, just to remind myself, maybe be more, you know, interactive as a team, you know, this is, team is going to focus more on people. Um, again, it doesn't mean that they cannot focus on tasks, but as a natural preference, as a whole, this team might be more people oriented. Absolutely correct. And, and what we see happen is that we as individuals gravitate toward jobs, careers, and even organizations that tend to fit our style. And as a result, we tend to see teams that have these concentrations. And it's good to remember that two things will always happen when we have concentrations of style. One is we'll amplify our strengths, but second is we will also amplify our weaknesses. And you know, this is just a team of, I think approximately 11, don't count, um, but we've done this map for entire organizations you know where you can plot you know hundreds of people on this map and it gives you you know quite a picture of the communication culture of your organization yeah really and it really becomes an organizational development tool because you can slice and dice the data any way possible mm -hmm. and there's no limit how many people you can include into uh, in the analysis i've seen several thousand people sometimes be included but some examples would be for example that if an organization wanted to try to identify what behaviors create success for certain job roles, they simply map the successful employees and begin to identify what those concentrations are. Perhaps we have a turnover problem. Let's analyze who are the employees we lost in the last six months or 12 months, mapping on the diamond, and typically there's a concentration. Now we have one more piece of information to help us understand what do we need to do differently to solve this problem. Right, it helps us as leadership, you know, make decisions about our organization that is very clear, it's it's uh, non-judgmental, it's basically, you know, visual, you can see it. And that's really the power of the diamond. It's a map, it's just like, if we are in the wilderness without a map, we're in trouble. If we have the map, we know which direction to go to. Okay, so what we wanted to do today is just to kind of give you an overview of the extended disk diamond. You know, a lot of you are familiar with our profiles, and as Marcou said, profiles give you a lot of information about an individual, but, you know, sometimes that's too much information, or maybe it's not the most effective way to deliver, um, you know, information about that individual, and the end point is we just want the person to understand about themselves. Well, really what we do is we provide the information in different formats. Mm -hmm. It's like with the disk assessment itself, we have different styles and different preferences. People also have different preferences when it comes to understanding new information. Diamond is one other way to help somebody understand who they are, what their team is, what the organization is, to make it very visual and very practical. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Marku. Thank you, everyone out there. Um, we do have another webinar coming up for um, titled Extended Disc for the Financial Services Sector. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's my industry before getting an extended it's disc. It's right and, up Marku's alley. He's uh, having two really good weeks right now. <laughs> so uh, we have a lot of assessments that are specific specifically for that sector, and we'll talk about those. We do a lot of work in this industry, so this is going to be a good webinar. And, and go to extendedthis.org, and on the top right, you'll see an events tab. You'll find out all the upcoming, upcoming webinars and other events. 
And um, if you look at the webinar times and dates and they don't work for you, register anyway because we will email you the recording after the webinar so you can listen to it at your convenience. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day.